Hey, Dr. C here with you. Do you have leaky liver? Let's talk about what this means and make sense of it. Leaky liver is the state in which your liver is just overloaded with fuel and it's leaking extra fuel out in the bloodstream. That can be in the form of glucose, triglycerides, cholesterol, even ketones. And this is why we get abnormal levels of those things by and large, because the liver is pouring them out by mistake. When these fuel substrates are leaking, they damage the blood vessels. And that's how most disease develops, is from vascular damage. So you may have heard about things like leaky gut or leaky brain. And leaky is all about something being where it shouldn't be. Leaky gut, that's where biologically active proteins, they are brought into the bloodstream by mistake. We've got these fragments and waste from bacteria, and they should leave in the stool, but they can come in mistakenly. So something bad from the outside comes to the inside. Uh, these compounds can interact with the immune system. They can start inflammatory processes and create a lot of other immunologic issues. Leaky brain is pretty much the same thing for the blood-brain barrier. So the, the brain is within a compound called the blood-brain barrier. It's got a separate environment. So things that belong outside get inside. So leaky liver, it's leaky, but it's a bit the opposite in that something that belongs inside gets outside. So your liver's job is to store fuel, and that's in the form of fuel molecules. So we've got glucose, triglycerides, ketones, and we can make glucose from carbohydrate, or we can convert that from muscular protein. We can make triglyceride from anything, from carbohydrate, from fats, even from ketones. And ketones we make when we're not burning fat, so they're a little different in that way. But your liver, they're all treated like fuel. And you hold on to those, and the idea is that you release them when the body needs more energy than it's getting at that moment. When your liver's healthy, it works fine. It's got room to store any surplus of fuel and releases that when you've got a deficit. The molecules come out in a slow, steady rate based upon your needs at that moment. <clears throat> but there's times where the liver gets overloaded. It's got too much fuel and there's no longer enough room for storage. In those cases, your body wants it to give off, I'm gonna make up some numbers, like one part of fuel, but it's so full that that little request, too much comes out that what should be one part ends up being three parts or 10 parts. And all this extra fuel harms your system. We can see symptoms of this, things like itchy skin or fatigue, really high erratic appetite, food craving, gas or bloating, energy crashes, chemical sensitivity, headaches, nausea, swollen ankles. So these are some short-term symptoms that it can cause. Now, I mentioned leaky gut a minute ago, and it's relevant here too because leaky gut and leaky liver, they can contribute to one another. There's a thing called the gut-liver axis, and the process is about bacterial translocation. So bacteria and bacterial endotoxins can come from the gut into the bloodstream and cause the liver to act differently, be more apt to leak out its fuel. But it goes the opposite way too. There's a thing called the liver bile acid microbiome axis. So adults make about 800 to 1,000 milliliters of bile in a given day. It's more of a green fluid. It comes from the liver. And bile acids, they can break down this bacterial translocation products. So when your liver's leaky, however, it doesn't make the proper bile in the ways that it should. And that by itself can cause changes in the gut flora which contribute and cause leaky gut syndrome. So these things go together and they completely feed off of one another. This is just one way in which your liver is completely central and important to all aspects of health. So in the case of type two diabetes, that's where we learned about this concept and that's where the, the phrase leaky liver came from. We used to think that diabetes came about when the pancreas was simply unable to make insulin or there was far too much insulin. And this is big stuff. The data is now saying that if you lump together those who are diabetic with those who are at risk for diabetes, that's over half of adults. It's the majority of people. So what we're seeing now is that diabetes is probably more driven by the liver than it is by the pancreas. So when the liver gets too much fat inside of it, it is more apt to cause fuel to spill out. 
So in terms of percentages, you can think about like, you know, humans and body fat and sizes or whatnot. Well, your liver needs to be lean to be healthy. If your liver is more than 5% fat, we call that fatty liver syndrome. So your liver is very fat sensitive. You know, a human at 5% fat would be ridiculously lean, but your liver, that's too much. And fatty liver is common, but it's very underdiagnosed because it can be present and not yield abnormal findings. So people can have normal blood liver enzyme levels. They can even have a normal liver ultrasound. The only way you know for certain if someone has it is by a biopsy, and we don't do that for screening purposes. So we suspect it whenever ALT scores are above somewhere around 18 or 19 for women and above 30 for men. That's suspicious for that. Ultrasound studies, they can show fatty liver, but they do not rule out fatty liver because it won't show up when it's at the earliest stages. So what's causing all this fat buildup and this leaky stuff? Well, there's too much fuel, and that can be total intake of carbs, fats, ketones. It's not that one of those was good and the others were bad. It's that total collective amount of fuel altogether. Then there's also how that plays out with the body's ability to burn fuel. So you need to have good amounts of micronutrients. You need to have a low burden of toxic chemicals to burn fuel effectively. And the other side of this is that the liver has to have help from the skeletal muscle to make use of fuel. If the muscle is not working right, then it's all on the liver to manage and store fuel. Now, many can lose muscle from aging if they're less active, and that's called sarcopenia. We also see total muscle loss from those who consume lower amounts of dietary protein. We need to have protein for chemical reactions and for building muscle tissue, but if we're too low in the protein that we take in, We've got to use up our muscle tissue to keep supplying the chemical reactions, and that can drive the sarcopenia or the age-related muscle loss. You know, and paradoxically, our protein needs increase as we reach our 40s and 50s and 60s. They don't go down. The other way the muscles play in is a thing called fatty muscle syndrome or intermuscular adipose tissue, IMAT. And what's happening there is the muscles are present but they've got too much fat inside of them as well. And they don't have room to help store any extra fuel and take the load off the liver. It's pretty much the same thing as fatty liver, but it's taking place in the muscles. And it's a little bit different from muscle loss, the sarcopenia, because it's not as solely age-related. So we see that there's this adrenal stress response, which puts someone into storage mode. And that can be a big driver of the intermuscular adipose tissue. We also see that it's much more driven by inactivity. So studies on young people who are office workers or those that have had a stroke and lost use of one extremity, you can see how that extremity has large amounts of fat buildup within the muscle tissue. And the more that's happening, the more fat has to go into the liver. And the more that's there, the more the liver is going to leak. So how do we reverse all this stuff? Well, this was really the idea behind the metabolism reset diet. So we chose liver supportive foods. We made a short time frame with a low fuel intake, but adequate protein. So we didn't have to take away muscle mass and also so we could supply the essential amino acids needed for many liver chemical reactions. We also supplied high amounts of RS. So your gut could make short chain fats that could help to reverse the leaky gut and help the liver do a better job with its detoxification processes. And it works by that mechanism, by reversing all that bacterial translocation, but also by lowering the fat inside the liver cells and correcting the two main liver pathways. There's phase one and phase two, and with leaky liver, it's common that phase two gets slower than phase one. So a lot of wastes are pulled out of storage and they're activated, but they're not packaged and eliminated. We call this pathologic detoxification or retoxification. So with the reset, we fix those phases. We also take away the fat that's trapped between the liver cells. So within, but also between the liver cells. And the last part, there's a thing called the unfolded protein response that takes place in the endoplasmic reticulum. That's a mouthful. <laughs> but you've got this portion inside cells that helps the liver cells to make proteins that regulate your coagulation, 
that break down your hormones, that form bile. So the endoplasmic reticulum is essential. And when it's in a state of trauma, it does what's called the unfolded protein response. And that's when the body will no longer burn fuel, but just stuff it into storage in the liver. So we help to turn that off and reverse that process so that fuel can work properly again. The body doesn't have to be insulin resistant. It can now allow an insulin response, take that fuel in and burn that effectively. And that also works because we're getting glycogen back in place, the healthy, good form of carb the liver needs to have to burn fat for fuel effectively. So what do you do with all this? Well, if you suspect leaky liver, if this sounds like concerns of yours, if you've had issues about the cravings, the energy being unstable, the body weight being fluctuating, or some of the more direct liver symptoms, just find out. You can take the metabolism quiz today and learn whether or not your liver is slowing down your metabolism and if something's off with that. If it looks like there were issues, you can easily connect with an IH doctor for personalized care or you can join us for the next free Metabolism Reset Challenge. We do this over the course of seven days. We'll have one coming up soon. And in those seven days, we've seen participants reverse elevated liver enzymes. And those that were unable to lose interest in the waste for decades had that response come back again, had their waste start to shrink. Energy comes back, the gut gets healthier. So the body can change. And so much of how you feel is conditional upon the health of your liver. And your liver is one of the most resilient parts of your system. So the beautiful message is that as important as it is, it can get better. It can change. It can heal. And I'd love to help you out if that's the case. <laughs> Take great care. We'll talk again really soon. Bye-bye.